and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Today I want to talk about Street Fighter 2. I want to talk about two versions of the game that were released relatively closely together and of course released on the flagship Sega systems, namely the Sega Mega Drive with the Championship Edition and the lesser known and definitely not worldwide released Street Fighter 2 for the Master System. Now the Street Fighter 2 Master System version was actually only released in a few places. It was, you know, Capcom were largely uninvolved in the entire endeavour. They didn't see the point of releasing it on a lesser system and moreover didn't see the point releasing it for a system that was on its way out anyway but other companies stepped in to help out and Street Fighter 2 was released in some countries like Brazil, a few minor parts of America and Japan but for the most part never made it out of those countries. Now today isn't about scapegoat and it's not about finding the worst version of Street Fighter that's ever been made. If we wanted to find the worst version of Street Fighter ever made we would talk about this one. Of course the worst Street Fighter to my mind of Street Fighter 2 is the Game Boy version. So before we get anywhere, before we spend today rubbishing either one of these two games, let's have a look at this bad boy here in the middle. Street Fighter 2 for the Game Boy. Someone actually went to the trouble of creating Street Fighter 2 for the Game Boy. Now let's look at it. The, the music isn't terrible. It's not the worst game. Let's give that let's give the music a bit of legs. So let's give it some something to go with. Bit sharp. But let's try it. So this is Ken versus Blanca. I know it's small on the screen, but largely because if I max screened it, it is blurry as hell. The frame rate isn't fantastic. The move system has only got two buttons, but then again, so has the master system. The music's not too terrible either. Um, moves are, once again, because you've only got two buttons, you've only got punch and kick. Uh, with lots of other moves being performed by holding forward and back. Most of the special moves themselves are insanely difficult to pull off and for the most part this is a largely unplayable game but if we lose that we can make our way into what this comparison is meant to be about and that is of course Street Fighter 2 for the Master System and the Mega Drive. So I'm sure most of you either played Street Fighter 2 or played that Mega Drive Special Championship Edition but what we'll do is we'll re-familiarise ourselves with the intro of the Mega Drive version just to see whether it's still worth our time. So let's have a look. This is how it began. I'll try and keep it down a little bit here. Lovely intro. The building, of course. Never did figure out who these two fellas were, by the way. So. Never did understand that graphical mess up of the logo there as well, the way they decided to do that. The music pretty faithful, still not quite as good as the SNES version of Street Fighter 2. Um, of course they went for Hyper Edition and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, probably the definitive Street Fighter. Um, now again, this has been set to the hardest setting, so that's the one you're going to be watching today. This is uh, a place where I believe of Sagat all the way through from beginning to end. Champion Edition, so none of the hyper super speedy business, and of course Championship Edition had all of the bosses included so you could play everyone. I hope a number of you watching this are having tremendous flashbacks to playing this game in the arcade. But you know what, we won't take it any further, let's pause that. And now, we'll, we've seen the intro, let's see how this compares with the intro on the Master System version. No music, first thing. So here we have the Master System version playing along here. No intro, because of course the Master System doesn't have that built into the BIOS, as we've mentioned in other videos. Um, there was no facility with the Master System to have that big, big logo at the beginning. The closest you got was the word Capcom with no music. And also, it should be mentioned, Street Fighter 2 on the Master System not only has fewer characters, as you can see, only four there, though it does seem to include three bosses. We will talk about the characters that are missing and why later. But we've got a slower lower res version of the music. We do have the announcement of the characters, something you don't get in the Mega Drive, but we'll leave this playing and we'll see how the Master System version pans out. So first things first, the Master System version, much like the Game uh, Boy version we just saw, only has two buttons on the controller. Also, look at the shadows. Every single character looks like they're floating. Shadows are such a luxury when it comes to console games. And also a lot of the moves, the way they're performed, are insanely hard to pull off due to them removing 
a lot of the frames in, in the, a lot of the individual moves to keep the RAM low, the consequence was removes had to be pulled off exceedingly fast. Um, even if you had the game on the lowest setting, it was insanely hard. Now what we're seeing right here is the music. The music is actually not too bad for this first level. The majority of the music in most of this game is pretty poor, if I'm honest, but we shouldn't be hugely surprised. But the game itself, I still don't understand why those characters are floating. There's no reason for that. Maybe it was because the game was rushed, who knows. But the backgrounds are pretty faithful, although the colour palette is much, much lower. So at the end of this fight, what we'll do is we'll run the Mega Drive version and just to give you some idea how the two uh, compare. And then, of course, we'll play them both together. But look at that um, on the right hand side there. The, the floor wasn't depicted all the way across because of the, the foreground and the background just don't pan up together. So the more you push to either side, you will notice that a lot in the later levels as well. Particularly some of the more detailed backgrounds as well. So as you can see, Ryu there, he's won. A lot of animations were missing there. You probably noticed there when he was knocked on the floor. But this has taken us through to the end of round one where Ryu take on Ken. So let's pause that and check back in with our Mega Drive version. More detailed music. Far a more detailed colour palette there as well. Moves themselves, far easier to pull off. The background's far more fluid. Hopefully we will see that Chun-Li level. And those extra flight uh, moves and also the, I don't know if you noticed, but when the Hadouken and the Hurricane Kick and all that stuff was being pulled off, very rarely did you hear a lot of those things being announced. Once again, there will be trivia later in the video, but I do think it's interesting to see how these two weigh up. Because remember, um, to, um, the Master System version had a lot to live up to. The Street Fighter was a huge, huge franchise and a number of people just didn't have the money or their parents didn't have the money to graduate them from an 8-bit system to a 16-bit system. So for them it was a huge luxury to get hold of um, Street Fighter for the Master System. Even if it was in those minor countries where the Mega Drive was either not released yet or hugely uncost effective to purchase a new system. They wanted to eat every single penny or cent out of those older games. So what we'll do now is we'll see how these two games look played at exactly the same time and see how they fare together. So let's. Uh, we've got the end of that. Hopefully, um, I very much doubt the Master System will have bonus stages, but that will be interesting to see if it is there. So here we go. We're going to get that into the second one. And now we will see how the two games compare together. Sorry about the music mashing up. We will try and go through and compare the music later. So how the two games play at the same time, as you can see straight away, you can see all of those extra frames. Ken's background there, completely out of sync of Ken's background that we're used to, as you can see. Most of the background is missing. If you move further towards the side of the screen, the boat will appear, but barely at all. Whereas in the Mega Drive version, of course, you've got the animation, the people moving around there in the background, the destructible barrels, all that sort of thing. And again, of course, with a number of characters missing, we do see a lot of the backgrounds missing as well. Again, there's lots of information about the way the different characters end game, but the Master System is just a slower game. I know, obviously, Zangief is making mincemeat of Zangief here, or oh, spinning pile driver, but. I think it's fair to say that it is most certainly a slower game. Sagat playing way too cocky there on the right hand side of the screen. Consider himself lucky. Normally anyone that can get two spinning pile drivers into the game there, you are asking for trouble. And again, we're still not hearing those Hadoukens and those other things, but let's take this opportunity to lower the music on that Mega Drive version. So here we have the music of Ken's level in Street Fighter. Dal Sim, of course, in the Mega Drive version, another character that's completely missing from the Master System. We'll talk about that later on. But that music there for the Master System, far, far more bitty. So it's it's very hard to compare these two games because they, oh, you know, sprite-wise, they're only enough identical. But music-wise, animation-wise, playability, they're just not the same game. Also, probably one of the biggest kickers for anyone that thought about buying Street Fighter because if you think about the 90s we trusted our games developers far more than we do these days because unfortunately these days we've just been burnt too many times 
and the, the Sega Master System version of Street Fighter had one enormous downfall. It was one player. Who, uh, you know, a one player Street Fighter game, pointless. Now, people did manage in ROM form to get the two player version out there, but the Sega Master System version of Street Fighter is a one player game. Ergo, half of the fun of Street Fighter is completely nullified. Now, Chung Lee's music there, not too bad to be honest. You can definitely hear the original music there far more than you can with the, you could with the Ken version. But now let's listen to that original arcade sound of the uh, Mega Drive version. So let's check that out. Let's get that up there, and it's the bonus stage. Excellent timing, and we'll get that turned down, shall we? So stereo sounds far more abrasive. That car getting seven bells knocked out of it. Do check out my video on the special stages throughout the entire Street Fighter series. I've got a nice video on that, just detailing every single special stage in the whole of Street Fighter history. But, straight away, that music, I know obviously we're looking at the car, and Sagat, you loser, you didn't do it. But the music most certainly better on the Mega Drive, as you'd expect. But it's, this isn't about which is better, we've been over that. What it's about is just how good a conversion the master system is. Now we've already looked at the Ryu background and how it compares with um, uh, between the Mega Drive and the master system. I mean, look at that. You've got the extra layers there. There's about three, possibly even four layers of background there on the Mega Drive version. You've got the ground, you've got another layer behind it of those weird rooftop things. You've got another layer of rooftop and then you've got the background and that large tower in there. Now, the blanker background here on the left, so limited, the snake is missing from the tree, the guy in the hut, it's all just gone. It's not a good version. Of course it's better than that Game Boy one that we saw, but it just doesn't weigh up. But the real question is how do the pair of them, you know, on a background level, what had to be sacrificed to get such an enormous game like Street Fighter, you know, an arcade classic that even pushed a Mega Drive to its boundaries, what what would they have to get rid of to have that Master System version? So let's talk about that. Let's get this sound dropped down a little bit, shall we? And talk about what had to change here. Let's get those two together. And let's talk facts. So, straight away, the time difference between the release of these was several years. They weren't released back to back, certainly. The Street Fighter 2 license had been around for a while. And when Street Fighter 2 was released for the Master System, as I said, not only was it only released in certain regions and areas, but it was also pretty much at the end of the Master System lifespan. Hence why it's very, very rarely known in most places, but also that hardly any versions were released. And if you do have an original cartridge in its original retail packaging, keep hold of it. That, my friend, is going to be worth some serious dough. So, this, this, the Street Fighter 2 version on the Master System isn't really a, a specific port of any version. It's certainly not just a port of Street Fighter 2 World Warrior or Championship Edition. If you look on the bottom left of the screen there, you'll notice that nowhere does it mention anything about the version of this game. Largely because it just is a complete anomaly. Where is the plane in Guile's background there, by the way? Um, it's a mix between Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition on the Mega Drive and Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers. It mixes elements of both, both graphically, but of course it doesn't include all those extra characters. We will get onto the characters too later on. Um, it mixes elements and sound effects from both. There's only about two ways in which the Master System version is actually superior. Um, than the Mega Drive. The first one is the announcement of characters when you select them and another one is just when you um, select the bosses, the bosses themselves and the roster that you face against is actually more faithful to the arcade than the Mega Drive. Whereas in every other respect, as you won't be surprised, the Mega Drive is of course superior. Now, um, the sound effects was one of the first things that really suffered in this conversion. We can talk about those shadows, we can talk about the animations, we can talk about all the backgrounds, all of that stuff, but the sound was the biggest problem. Street Fighter 2 had one of the most comprehensive sound boards of any game at that time. The reason being that the characters had their own individual sounds, you had two characters with their own sound effects, you had the backgrounds had sounds, you had the music that would change mid-round, and end of round music as well. It was very, very deep, not just the music themselves, but the way in which music was accessed and the triggers for that music. So they had to eliminate most of that 
pretty early on. Now, the, although the announcer vocals from the Mega Drive, um, oh, well, that was missing from the Mega Drive version in, is inside, pretty much all sound effects of special moves throughout the entire game, with the exception of a few for the bosses, are missing in the Master System. Likewise, a lot of some of the moves are missing for the Master System version, either because they are impossible to pull off with the handset, uh, with the two-button hand system. That is an awful background for Balrog, uh, depending on which country you're in or you want to name him. Likewise. The characters themselves being fewer characters in the game, they've actually removed in that roster compared with the 12 that are available on the Mega Drive. In the Master System version, there's only eight. They removed E Honda, don't know why. Um, Zangief they removed, presumably because his move set was near enough impossible. Another bonus stage, lovely. They removed bonus stages, sadly. They removed uh, Dalsim, presumably because his character palette and his move set is very hard to port over with the extension. And Vega is removed as well. What you're left with is the, um, and of course, the Super Edition characters, they are nowhere to be seen. Tammy, T-Hawk, um, Fei Long, and of course, DJ. They're all gone. Although their portraits do feature in multiple locations, both on the box and in the roster in the opening sort of don't press anything title screen. Um, now on top of that, the character's endings are completely missing as well. If you complete the game with any character, as we'll probably see with Ryu, there is nothing at the end there. You don't get anything character specific. What you see is the portraits of Balrog, Saga, and then Bison, so no Vega. They're the ones that are used in uh, the Championship Edition. Um, when you, It's the same thing you get, actually. If you complete Championship Edition with a boss, what you get on the ending for them in the Mega Drive version is pretty much what you get for every single character in the Master System. Um, but you do get a little portrait of your character, but then again, you saw that when you... What is going on with Barrog? He's doing nothing there. Um, now, although those character-specific endings are missing, um, everything else about the game, from uh, the moves that are performed being character faithful, to the music per areas, is pretty much faithful to the Street Fighter series, even if it isn't an identical rip of the Mega Drive version of Special Championship Edition. Now, the game itself didn't take a huge amount of time um, to be developed. It was developed pretty much primarily by Tech, Tour, uh, Tech Toy. They wanted to develop their own version, and both Sega and Capcom were pretty shaky on the idea, with Sega being very, very against it, thinking it was difficult and that it would look pretty terrible. Here we have Sagat side by side, so we can actually see um, Sagat and how he looks against his 8-bit counterpart. Now, when they tried to develop Street Fighter 2, they did sh um, show early working, but Sega pretty much shot the idea down, claiming it was an impossible task, which, let's face it, they're pretty right. Um, they continued, a tech toy continued to insist that they could get this game out, and, and uh, although they kept insisting, and everyone kept saying no, tech toy still continued to develop both digital art, sprites and backgrounds, as well as um, using emulated versions of the Mega Drive version, and again, emulators, 1990s, uh, to create a movements prototype to show Sega how it would work and how the Master System could still utilize this. Again, Sega didn't approve. They said no, they didn't want the game that would perform badly and therefore hurt their system's credibility. In the end, they decided to proceed with it anyway, in spite of what Sega said. They decided to continue development, which went on without approval, approval for about five to seven months. The development time, uh, the actual physical creation of it was four to five months of that time. The early part was spent just creating the digital artworks. Um, after about one or two months of extracting images and adapting them, eventually the game was released. And Sega, when they saw the final product, signed it off for release, finally. Oh wow, we've got to see the um, Psycho Crusher there. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but Bison seems particularly far off the ground there. Now, I've got to say, Tectoy did a good job. It's not fantastic. It's got the colour palette, the backgrounds are pretty poor. Whether they just ripped the original animation and just tried for the best, who knows. But you've got to give it to Tectoy. This isn't a too bad a conversion. It lives up you know, to what you'd expect from Street Fighter on an 8-bit system. It's a shame about the two-player, and the sound is pretty terrible. But if you were a Master System owner and you wanted to get your hands on Street Fighter, this was as close as you were ever going to get. Um, but ultimately, for the Ultimate Street Fighter experience, of course, the Mega Drive version is pretty good up there, particularly for a Street Fighter 2 experience. For Super, you've got to give that to the snares. But... Here we go, if we're looking at the Master System version up there, you have to forgive my lefts and rights, you're looking at it uh, different to what I am. 
it's going to be interesting to see just how this pans out. It's a shame we're not going to see Ryu's, you know, climactic end to the franchise. And M. Bison there does seem a very strange uh, performer there. There's no scores, I've just noticed that as well. Scores take an absolute backbencher there. I don't know why that was removed. Surely scores aren't going to affect the RAM that much. The hit detection's quite poor as well. A number of the moves performed there by Ryu haven't connected. Combos are definitely out of the window here. Whereas if we look at the Mega Drive version, it's pretty good. Here we go, we get to see the end of Ryu there on the Master System version and how the two compare. So, for all your hard work, and there's still no, I've just noticed, there's no markers there for round one or two. So if you complete the game, you are the king of Street Fighter. Unfortunately, all three of those characters, they are looking pretty good health. I kind of expected the beat up versions. But, there you go. So there you go, that is what happens when you complete the game on the Master System. But, what about after that? What about if we want to see what happens? What do we get? Because right now what we're getting is a still picture and we've got another bonus stage there on the right. That's oh, it's such a shame about the lack of bonus stages. And there you go, Street Fighter 2 for the Master System. Now it should be mentioned that in these credits, these are largely people at Tech Toy with a slight nod to the Capcom staff. Which, fair play to them, they really put the hours in to create this game. They are some of the ugliest credits I've ever seen. That looks like it's reading from notepad.txt kind of information. But nevertheless, fair play to them. That is a very well done job. So, do you know what? Let's wrap things up here. I hope you've enjoyed this. But that was Street Fighter 2 for the Sega Master System and how it's compared against the glorious Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition for the Sega Mega Drive. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any recommendations for future videos, do pop it down there in the comments. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.